All right, we are live at 11.05, whatever that means, I'm not sure, but it's pretty much 11.05. We're uh, live on YouTube. We're not live on Facebook, although we're going to post this on Facebook. If you've seen some of our videos, and there are hundreds out there over the past 10 years, we're kind of looking for our new format. So it's a little bit different. So kind of if you're watching this randomly in the middle of a bunch of other ones, it's like, well, welcome to the middle of a bunch of random videos. What we're going to talk about today, it's kind of like going to be a product preview, sort of, uh, maybe a show of a Model A frame, but it is a Model A frame. Yesterday, if you watched it, either live on uh, YouTube, and you can do that by subscribing, and it happened to be on T-Bucket TV, which was kind of a mistake. We got T-Bucket TV, and we have Spirit Cars. Both of those are channels on YouTube. And we try to do the T-Bucket stuff on T-Bucket TV, but this is the Model A and it wound up there, so whatever. If you're watching it, we are glad you're watching. We started doing the perimeter frame yesterday. It kind of showed how to, we just take 2x4 tubing. It's got a couple of, couple of notches in it, so if you look, look down, the, it's not straight. It comes, kind of angles in a little bit, angles out a little bit again. So what we do is just notch it. Bend it, notch it, bend it. Of course, everything is jig built. We had it on the jig yesterday. <coughs> this one here happens to be set up for coilover shocks. Uh, the car bottom had transverse leaf original, which we can see. We will show you that in a minute. But this is set up for your coilover shocks, your bolt holes, reinforcement. It doesn't have a cross member in it. This is just a perimeter frame. Um, the customer wants to weld a lot of the brackets on it. So he's going to have a four-link rear suspension. I believe he'll probably have a nine-inch. And on the front, it is set up for a drop axle. So the cross member for the drop axle has been welded in. This is kind of an original style here. Your radiator will actually bolt on top of the cross member. Your spring goes up into the pocket, bolts in. And then you've got your spring horns. If you look on the side, on a Model A frame, it actually tapers. So you can use a 2 by 4 from here back but you've got to cut it and taper it to where your frame horn is there. And on the back, it tapers a bit too. You can see it back here. So it just kind of tapers up a little bit going into the rear cross member. So I got some of the buy guys. We do this at 11.05 because everybody's at lunch, but I made them stay. This is Model A Roadster that we do. So I'm going to take it off. We're going to set it on this frame right quick. And we have got a Model A frame that we've turned into a jig here, so I'll show you what an original frame looks like. Let's put this on that car there. Close enough. And you can see the, the frame is flat. The floor is flat in the Model A. No swoopy. We, we do it a couple different ways. We have what we call an A-rod, which we channel three inches, and you can actually put it on a 27 chassis, and it channels on. Also, we can do it on pinch 32 rails uh, to give it that high boy look. I don't see any 32 rails just handy. Well, there's some over there. Oh. Let's walk over here. This This will be good. This is a 32.5 window that we're, we put all the metal structure in it before we, uh, before we actually put the doors in. So it's, it comes out of the fiberglass shop, then it goes into the, the welding area here to get the metal framework in it. This is actually a, a frame that we built, and we've made a jig out of it. You can kind of see it's got, um, other than having primer on it, the frame is indented. It's real swoopy. Not, it's, the whole frame is swoopy. You can see how it swoops up coming into here. And the floor just fits it. So what we've done, we actually took a 32 floor and we mold the 32 floor into the Model A. So you can go ahead and take your Model A, put it up on 32 rails and get that high boy look. And you got a, you got a sexy looking rail on the side here instead of the Model A, which is just pretty flat and, and kind, of, kind of plain and ordinary. But if you're wanting to run fenders and running boards, you need to have the original Model A frame if you're going to want to run original fenders, running boards, splash bands, rear fenders. It really needs to be on a Model A frame. Now you can kind of see the difference here. 
this is a Model A frame I picked up at an auction for like 10 bucks. I seen it sitting there, I was like, oh, well, turn that into a jig. Most of our jigs are our frames, so we make sure that we know that um, when we sell a kit, our frame and our body and everything's all fitted together. And since the, the bodies are built in a mold and the frames are built in a jig, that pretty much, you know, it's going to fit together. It's not going to be a lot of fit and finish on your part. We've already worked out those details. But it's nice to have an original frame because now I can say, all right, our body will fit on an original frame, make sure it fits that way. And uh, both ways, because we're, we're doing a, a 34 steel body car over here that's going to have a, one of our frames under it. So it's nice to have the body once in a while, a rigid body, just to make sure everything is fitting. A lot of times people will buy a chassis and uh, find an old steel body car and, and uh, go ahead and put a steel body car on a modern chassis. And one of the reasons you want to do a modern chassis is you can see the cross members are riveted. Nothing is boxed. This frame, we bought it, and you could see that it already had problems. Somebody had tried to weld it. So whoever, whoever had this originally, it had some issues, and they just tried to cobble it back together to make it work. But I've got all the original body mounting holes are in it. The mounts for the fenders and the running boards are there. Now the back, I was talking about a transverse leaf much like the front, where the leaf goes up into the pocket, the transverse leaf will come around, go up into the pocket, and you'll have just one leaf, a mono leaf spring in the back. But this is the original frame, but again, you can see it's just riveted together, and there's a lot of flex in it, not being boxed. I mean, you can just see in the front here how how much different and this is this is welded now because they were having issues but normally this would have been you can see where the welds or, or the rivets were actually ground out and you can kind of see the rivets down here so we didn't do this evidently at some point in the history of this car it was starting to come apart so they welded that you can see on the front <coughs> here from the horns forward we don't generally box it but occasionally we do if the customer requests it and it's more for aesthetics than anything else but this is fully welded, the frame, fully boxed, 3 16 You can put a lot of horsepower in this frame and still uh, not have a flex or a twist or problems with it that way. So if you're going to make a modern-day hot rod, definitely minimum box a frame and, and deal with your frame. Don't just and put modern brakes on it. I mean, you make the cars safe. They weren't designed to really do highway speeds of 60, 70 miles an hour or more. Uh, they were they were a tough old car and they were great in their day, but you know technology has come a little bit farther than what we had. A lot of ways to do it. You can do it with independent front suspension. You can do it with an independent rear suspension. You can do it with the straight axle. You can do uh, radius rods, four link. A lot of ways to do it. Wishbones. There's just no one way to do it. That's what makes hot riding so so cool. It's like everybody's idea and. If, if it works, go for it. So that's it for today. It's a quick one. We're trying to figure out what our new format's going to be. Check us out on Facebook. Go there. If you can't find us on Facebook, go to spearcars.com. That's our website. And on the bottom of the website, I think it'll get you to our Facebook page. You can, I think you can both subscribe and you can have a thing where our feeds actually show up on your feed if you want. But you got to push a button to do that. On YouTube, we're going to make a, a bigger effort to YouTube and then link from YouTube back to Facebook. We'll do the YouTubes live. And we got a couple of projects going on. I think what we're going to do with the projects that we've been doing, rather than just a hit and miss, do a little bit here, we're going to actually start doing video of that. That way we can do a little bit of editing because it's awful hard. I've, I've been talking now for six minutes, seven minutes, eight minutes. I've got a sign going ten minutes. And if you stayed this long, again, we appreciate you. But if I, we can make it a little more informative, I can throw some pictures in, we can show a little bit of this or a little bit of that, and then show you eight hours worth of work in 10 minutes instead of me talking for 10 minutes, pointing things out. So just keep watching. We appreciate it. We're going to kind of figure out what our new formats are going to be, and uh, we will keep you posted to that. We'll see you tomorrow. No, we'll see you Monday. Have a great weekend.